feeling if you can't hear me, just tell me. Okay. Or just a woo or articulate or whatever. Oh, amigos, everybody, this is Willie here, and um, this is Willie's View. And we have the wonderful, talented Thom uh, Beards, and you remember him Tom. from Young and the Restless. You want to say hi, Thom? Tom Beards. You Tom, know. I keep saying Thom, I'm it's sorry. Tom. <laughs> That's Tom. Right. Okay. Anyway, I just don't, I don't have to explain myself because everybody knows who I am. I am like that Michael Jackson famous, you know, that Liz Taylor thing that uh, Beyonce, you know, there's really no reason to go into it. I'm just kidding. Uh, Philip Chancellor on the Younger Restless, and I just, I did some other episodic TV. People have seen me on Mercy Road and Matlock and uh, Robin Hood, Memorial's Place. But I was never a big star, dude. Oh my goodness, I did not know, and I feel bad, I did not know that you were on Meryl's Place. I'm such a big Meryl's fan. I love that show, and I'm going to have to find you now on Meryl's Place. Uh, you don't happen to remember any, uh, which season that was, do you? I, I don't remember. I think it's called a demo, which is Easter, and it was one of my episodes. I was Hank. I was the boyfriend of uh, the young model, and I pushed... Joe down the stairs when she was pregnant. Oh my, okay, um, then I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it, so I'm going to have to check that out. I got to wrestle. I got to wrestle with Grant's show on a pool table. So his body was against mine, and I'm sure he's thinking about that right now. <laughs> oh my God, that is so cool. Okay, and then you mentioned that you were on um, some, oh, you said Murder, She Wrote. Okay, so what was it like on Murder, She Wrote? Because, um... The talented, um, you know, Jessica Griffith for, you know, um, what you call it, the, uh, the murder she wrote, what, did, was it, uh, did you like being on there? Did you do a lot of scenes? Yeah, it was cool. I was guest star for two episodes. And what was really cool about that show is they cast it by videotape. So I didn't even know I auditioned. My manager did that. So that was great that he did that. Because he just, you know, one day said, oh, by the way, <laughs> you're going to be a murder show. I'm like, yes. Ooh. $5,000. And, you know, it's a week. And on one of the episodes, I was the bad guy. I was the murderer. And the other episode, I was not. But Angela Lance, very, very, very friendly lady. Everybody on the set, very calm, very cool. She's so well liked and comfortable that, you know, there's no stress anymore. That is just awesome. Um, like I said, I'm just starstruck right now because I, Meryl's Place and then um, The Murder She Wrote. I know that you had done some shows, but those were two that really passed me. I did not know about those. Okay, so what about any miniseries or maybe movies? Have you done any of those? Movies, I guess they're really small person movies. So, yeah, yeah, I talk about it, so nothing, nothing, nothing impressive there. Okay, so let's go back to when you were on The Young and the Restless. Any, like, fond memories that you'd like to share with the fans that can get them all nostalgic again? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay, so what was like your last scene that 
you recall? Because I, if I recall, didn't you, um, didn't you do like your final scene right with was it Nina when you had to leave back to to go back to Australia, right? No, no, I don't think I had a big standout scene. I don't think so. I think uh, one of my last, I know one of my last scenes uh, was was with uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Chancellor and uh, Jill and uh, you know Cricket and Nina. So it was great because you know thirty years ago uh, these were the important castmates. So I was, I, so I knew then that this may be the last time I'm ever here. And it was really sweet. I was having a real sweet private moment thinking, oh, you know, is it cool that I'm here all these years later with Trisha, who plays me, you know, and Lori Bell, you know, I'm just crazy about the world. They're very, very nice ladies. Very nice ladies. Um, I, I love the Young Larissa's. Um, actually, that's actually the first soap that I've ever, uh, when I was little and, and was watching uh, growing up. That was the first one that I watched with Young Larissa's, and then I slowly ventured into all the other ones that we already have. Um, so how was your day today? Like, what, anything special you did out there? Dude, I live in Paradise, can I swear? Go ahead, man. I live in fucking Paradise, dude. Fucking Paradise. Every day. It's like, I can't believe I live here, dude. Uh, you know, I'm renting this house that happens to be at the end of the road, so I'm right next to Forrest, and I pretend the Forrest is mine, and I walk the dogs here, nobody's ever around, out my windows, these really tall uh, windows in this mountain home, you know, I see evergreens forever, and I can see the lake over there, and, you know, seriously, when I left Hollywood, uh, it was like I died and went to heaven, because I gave up my only ambition to be a movie star, I gave that up, and I was here, so it's like my whole life changed, and all of a sudden, everything's so good. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not in Hollywood worried about making $2,000 a month rent or auditioning or getting mad and you know, I'm getting old and oh, you know, yeah. I'm always there. Yeah. You know, instead, I'm like in this incredible place where I want to be anyway, so happy. Uh, so, you know, today it was just another day in paradise. Every day's in paradise. Oh. I walk the dogs to the lake and back, so that's like, uh, it's like an hour, 20 minute morning thing. And it works up a sweat because I gotta go up the mountain and up 50 stairs at the end of it. Oh my and, god, it uh, sounds wonderful. What kind of dogs, uh, yeah. for your fans that don't know, um, what, how many dogs do you have and what do you name them? I got two dogs named David. And Goliath, and they're both rescues. David is small, he's real sweet, everybody loves him, he loves everybody. Goliath, no, not so much. He's okay with people now, but every dog he sees, he freaks out. He's got scars all over his body, so I don't know what his previous life was like, but it wasn't good. So he's great in the house, but I only take him out in the morning, because, uh, or I only take him to the, to places there, there may be people and dogs, I only take him there in the morning. But, you know, we only walk through the woods, you know, four or five times a day. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really cool. All right, so I've got a couple questions for you. And it's okay to laugh and blush because, you know, it's fans. But, um, of course, the typical question I guess everybody wants to know is boxers or briefs? <laughs> uh, uh, those, uh, what are they called? They're the between ones. The, uh, the, uh, boxer briefs. The boxer briefs. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, we won't go too much into the whole romantic, uh, section in your life, because I do value privacy, but I'm sure the fans are curious, um, are you with anybody, or do they have a chance? <laughs> well, first of all, man, you know, I don't mind discussing everything, because I'm working on a sex memoir, uh, that is combating sex shaming. I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, I decided, you know what? I want to stay in paradise. I don't care if I ever see humans again. What if I wrote about my sex life? Would that pay my rent? And it was also, uh, it, 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 it initially, I also, other men were offering me their stories because I've been sexually uh, uh, assaulted. 
my TV was very minor, nothing compared to what most guys go through. But it was interesting anyway. So initially I was going to put that in my book as well, but then uh, there's so much about in my many decades of uh, dating and sex that uh, that's going to be a different book with the other men also do stories. But, uh, well, that's cool uh, that you're writing a, a book like here. that. I'm sorry. I said that's cool that you're writing a book like that. I mean, you know, the the more uh, the more better for you because you know if, if it helps you, like I said, if if it's great paying the rent, if it's helping you, you know, as a person and just you know to tell your story, I think that's great because I mean everybody has their own stories they want to tell, but I'm sure yours can you know help others and it it also puts more into your life, you know, that you'd like to share. Um, if you. I mean, if you're open and you want to talk about who you want to see or who you're seeing, and we're we're live um, on here, uh, you, feel free. You got the you got the floor. Are are you single or are you seeing somebody? Well, well, well first of all, let me just uh, yeah. For, uh, what I'd like to say is where I really shine uh, is that I'm so bold and unedited. You know, and that's what I did in my memoir, Forgiving Troy, where I forgave my schizophrenic brother for killing mom, and, you know, the long road there, and, and to do that, I had to reveal some uh, embarrassing stuff about myself, you know, but I did it because there was a point to it. I do the same thing with this, and I just realized that's really who I am. I'm somebody that essentially is really... Uh, it's really comfortable uh, apart from any traditions and apart from people's assumptions and apart from uh, expectations. So I've got no problem uh, being so brazen and sharing stuff that you won't ever hear another celebrity share. They won't do it because they've got too much to lose. Oh, yeah, and I agree. You know, you know, I don't have the same stuff to lose that they have. You know? <laughs> you know? I'm going to say it. You are definitely cute. You're hot. And I know if I was there, darn, I'd, I'd date you in a heartbeat up there in that paradise. It sounds wonderful. Thanks, <laughs> Judd. How about you? Were you dating? Were you almost at a date last night, didn't you? Actually, um, yeah, I did. I had the date. And um, it was, um, it, it, he, didn't, he didn't show up. But it was okay because um, even though I thought at the time that it would have been a um, where you get stand up, it turned out that his um, best friend was in ICU. So I just have to take you with green assault and s just see where you know what happens. Right? How wonderful this friend was in in the ICU. <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> yes, I have to take you with a grain of salt. But at the same time, you know, I got to count my little blessings. Um, I went to go see the movie Adrift, and it was so good. You've got to watch it, uh, Tom. Uh, you, you would, we would really love it. Um, it's based on a true story. Have you heard about that movie? No, dude. In fact, I don't have TV. I, I, I have no idea what's out there. So go ahead and tell me. Well, um... I don't want to spoil too much because there are the trailers, but it's um, a one a, a, this cute couple that they're um, they're together and you know they meet each other and um, they have this he has this rich friend that they're um, they seem married a couple and um, they need help trying to get their boat to go all the way out to back to San Diego because they're they're somewhere else in in, in you know far away and. Um, Anyway, trials and tribulations occur, and it puts this couple into a major tailspin. And it shows people, I, I think it does, this movie, it shows how far couples will go to, to stay together and what they deal with. And it's very emotional. It's definitely a church worker, and um, I would definitely recommend it to anyone. I think you would definitely enjoy it. Okay, cool. So what is, um, any music on your playlist? I mean, because I know that you have your paradise but 